Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, politics, culture, media, you name it. We're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment, like and share the program uh, so that your friends can join in the conversation. Also, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. And make sure in both cases, click that notification button. That way you can participate in the, the live chat as, as the video is going on. Also, if you haven't done so, please make it a point. Visit fpcgear.com. Folks, you got to go back every week because there's always new stuff that's being uploaded there. It is the place to go to get all sorts of cool Pro 2A swag. T-shirts, coffee mugs, hoodies, you name it. They're all right there at fpcgear.com. The best part about it is every dollar that you spend goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. So you can support the Second Amendment and you can look good doing it. That's fpcgear.com. All right, folks. Now, I, I wanted to have an opportunity. I want to talk with you guys about something that I normally don't talk about. And, you know, um, FPC is, hasn't in the past been real big on doing rallies. Uh, we're big believers in legislative action, in making phone calls, talking to your representatives, uh, doing whatever you got to do in order to make sure that you're advocating specifically on specific policies. We're making an exception in this case because there's a big event that's coming up in November. All right. It's coming up on November 2nd. Uh, and it is a rally for your 2A rights. And, you know, I, I want to, I, I cannot even begin to tell you enough how important it is that if you are available on that day, that you are there. And if you don't know why you should be there, I've invited one of the organizers here to explain to us all exactly why we need to be there. So with that, I want to welcome Mr. Rob Pincus to the program. Rob, how are we doing today? Good. Good morning, Craig. Good to be with you. Excellent. Excellent. So, so tell us, I mean, why should people participate in, in, if they do one rally, and I keep telling folks, if you do one rally all year, this is the one you need to be at. Please explain to our folks exactly why that is. Yeah, I think this one's really unique and important because this really is a grassroots effort. It really shows to the point that 100 million Americans aren't represented by any one organization, by any one person. Um, you'll be speaking there. I'll be speaking there. We're going to have a wide variety of perspectives, experiences, and honestly positions on what it means that the Second Amendment protects our individual right to keep and bear arms. There's a lot of people that have different emphasis. Um, some people have emphasis on education. Some people have emphasis on responsibility. Some people have emphasis on uh, making sure that our laws are re our laws are changed, that we regain our lost rights. Whereas other people are really focused on the ways that we can celebrate the rights that we currently get to exercise, and the way we can bring new people into the sport, into the ownership of firearms, into the preparation for personal defense, and into that responsible exercise of our Second Amendment rights. So there's a lot of diversity up on the stage, not just in in appearance, as we always talk about. I think so much the demographic or the lifestyle choices people make, but really in thought. This is going to be a representation of current. I think New Guard, Gun Culture 2.0, thought space around the Second Amendment. And it's going to be really important to support that because that's the message that I think really speaks to the legislators. That's the message that speaks to the votes. That's the message that speaks to all of our other fellow Americans who may not be one of those hundred million, but need to know that we are a diverse and large segment of the population with a lot of different ideas that we want to talk about, we want to engage in conversation with about other people. Well, ex exactly. I think you hit the point right on the head. You know, people don't realize how once one how diverse gun culture is, not just in terms of, like you said, appearance, ethnicity, uh, uh, gender, uh, lifestyle choices, whatever. But we are very diverse. Also, sometimes when it comes to some of the some of the positions, when it comes to policy, like there there are positions that FPC takes that the NRA might not take. There's positions that the NRA take may take that GOA won't take. And the thing is, is that. All of these groups are going to be represented there. So it'll give you an opportunity to connect with people who are passionate about the issue that you're passionate about. You may be passionate about open carry. Someone else may be passionate about, uh, about, uh, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, conceal carry, you know, whatever it may be. But the idea is, is that instead of doing what we sometimes tend to do is creating a circular firing squad, that we actually come together and realize that all of our rights are under attack. Yeah, for sure. I mean, FPC, you know, all the rights all the time. I think that's really important. Now, this is going to be an exclusively Second Amendment-focused event. 
So we're not right, going to have right. any of the ancillary issues brought up. I think that's incredibly important. It's also a nonpartisan event. You know, being in Washington, D.C., we expect that we'll have members of our serving military, maybe in uniform, show up. One of the things that's important to have them be able to participate is that this is a nonpartisan event. So while we all know which side of the political fence generally uh, favors gun rights over gun control, it's all being left aside when you come out to this rally. So we're not going to be talking about any of the other issues that sometimes get sort of tagged on to um, rallies or events that are of a purely political nature. This really is a, about s the social aspect of the Second Amendment. And, and obviously that's a civil right. And obviously there's political issues and obviously there's policy issues. But this is about the lifestyle of gun ownership and the thought process that goes into how we exercise and how we celebrate, defend, and again, in some cases, regain our Second Amendment rights. You, know, you mentioned open carry. Um, some people, that's their big thing. They're very passionate about that. Some people are very passionate about constitutional carry. Um, if you can legally own a gun, you can legally carry it. But a lot of people right now are very interested in preserving our right to privately transfer firearms in the over 30 states where we can still do that. Um, there's a lot of different Hearing Protection Act or re re removing the NFA or getting certain items removed from the NFA, while the other side, the pro-gun control side, the anti-gun side, is trying to add items to the NFA uh, controls. So it, it really is a, a interesting time in gun culture, I think. And that's why this came up relatively suddenly. You know, we saw a big turn this summer, of course, with the big election coming up in 2020. This summer, we saw a lot of uh, the candidates that are running start talking about gun control. And we started seeing a lot of people in the population on both sides of the political fence um, getting closer and closer to being uh, interested in passing re further restrictions or taking away some of the regained territory we've gotten over the last 20 or 30 years. And, and that's dangerous. And when we have a situation where the quotes or the talking points or the references are all outdated or maybe just attributed to one group or one person far too often, a rally like this becomes incredibly important. And that's why this is, is not sponsored by any one organization. And you'll see a lot of different organizations, a lot of different people um, up there on the stage speaking at the U.S. Capitol building on the afternoon of November 2nd, representing their perspective and some segment of that 100 million American gun owners audience. Well, and people need to understand when they start talking about the gun lobby, everyone thinks NRA sure. or they think gun manufacturers. And what they fail to understand is the gun lobby is, like you said, that hundred million people out there who, who own firearms. It's we are the gun lobby. It's the doc. It's your doctor. It's your nanny. It's your child's teacher. It's the guy who works at the gas station. It's the, the yoga instructor. I mean, we all make up that lobby. So even if you, even if they go after and they try to take down the the behemoth organization uh, that that is, is ten, tends to be their favorite target, th what they fail to understand is is that all of us together make up the gun lobby, and it's important for us to make to to flex our muscles, especially in a time where they're not just talking gun control; they're talking gun confiscation. I mean, yeah. their their rhetoric is so completely dialed up because they think that we're just going to, you know, roll over and take it. Yeah, there's definitely been a turn in the talking points and a turn in the rhetoric and the, the um, overtness with which the other side has made it very clear that there are many people on the, the anti-gun or pro-gun control side that will willingly and, and readily take away firearms from American citizens if they have the chance um, politically and and now we're even hearing talk of, uh, well, if it doesn't happen politically, it'll happen executive branch style uh, with law enforcement knocking on the door. And, and that's just something that, that no one wants. And, and as much as you see uh, kind of rhetoric at the extremes on both sides, I think that there's a vast majority to the, the 95th percentile of America doesn't even consider something like that a viable option when we have the opportunity to to work through the system, to work under the U.S. Constitution and within the boundaries of the U.S. Constitution as defined by the Supreme Court to continue to exercise and expand the responsible right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment. And I think that's the, what we keep coming back to, right? Everyone who gets up on that stage on November 2nd is a firm believer in the individual right to keep and bear arms and the idea that the Second Amendment protects that. And working within that framework, again, there's a lot of different things to talk about. When I think about the organizations that are going to be represented up there or even that have come out supporting the event, obviously, uh, Firearms Policy Coalition, um, Second Amendment Organization. We're going to have an NRA Board of Director up there on the stage. We're going to have uh, the di di Executive Director, I think is Eric Pratt's title, of Gun Owners of America, um, New Jersey Second Amendment Society, uh, Walk the Talk America, working uh, at the intersection of mental health and guns. They'll be up there. Um, guns for Everyone will be represented. And I'm, I'm leaving people out because it really is just this huge cross-section. Um, as of uh, this past weekend, we now have 26 confirmed speakers. You can 
learn more about who those speakers are at secondamendmentrally.com. We actually have more than 26 confirmed, but a few of them are being uh, sort of held back as surprise guests that will be announced uh, right there from the stage. In some cases, we may let a couple more names out um, as we get some different details locked down over the next 10 days. You know, it's important to note, too, you introduced me as one of the organizers, and I am. Jeff Knox is another one of the organizers. But the majority of the organizing committee has chosen to remain anonymous. Obviously, a couple of us had to come out and actually talk to speakers, talk to people like you, do some media. Um, so a couple of us, Jeff and I, are out in the public. For the most part, the organizing committee um, is doing work in the background, and all of the funding is also anonymous. We've had no announcement or release of the information of who's funding this. It's all being funded by uh, concerned Americans, concerned American gun owners. Um, in some cases, it is organizations that are tied to the Second Amendment community. But what's important here is that no one is sponsoring the event. You're not going to see banners. You're not going to see signs. No company, no organization is you know, recruiting membership specifically through this event. It really is um, fundamentally and purely, and in some cases, people are pretty skeptical and find it hard to believe. Um, but even something as simple as the email list, the people that are registering at Second Amendment rally.com, which we encourage everybody to do so we can communicate, you know, travel information, last minute details, things like that. Um, that email list is going to be destroyed. We, we all agreed at the committee me uh, meetings very early in, in August when we were really putting this together that um, by the end of November, that email list will disappear. Uh, we, mm -hmm. No one's going to benefit from it. It's not a lead generator. Um, it's really important to us that this uh, is an event for the people, by the people, as much as it can be. Now, as much as I agree with that concept and the idea of destroying the email list, those of you who come or those of you who are even paying attention, pay attention to the people that are there. Pay attention to the organizations that are sponsoring. Pay attention to, to what you're hearing and get their contact information because ultimately a rally is only good if it rally. You, you get together and you rally and the idea is to then go go get into action. So you need to find the place where you fit in, find the organization uh, that 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 is passionate about the thing that you're passionate about and get involved because ultimately it can't end with this rally the rally has to be the beginning not the end and that really is a great point uh, about what we're trying to achieve people ask us you know what's your goal for the thing well obviously we'd love to see 5,000 maybe we get up closer to 10,000 people on the west lawn at the u.s capitol that'd be great we're going to capture all the video obviously of, of the people giving their speeches and all the speakers and that'll get repurposed and spread out throughout the internet and social media and mainstream media as well. We know all those things are going to happen. But what, what I really believe, when you look at it, people say, well, Rob, you said 100 million American gun owners, and then you said 5,000 people. What? That's nothing. Well, here's the thing. I really, truly believe the people that are showing up, the people that are active on social media promoting this, people that are organizing buses from, from Connecticut, organizing buses from New Jersey, organizing buses from North Carolina, these people are grassroots leaders. And whether they officially hold a title with a local or state or national organization, even the attendees, every single one of the attendees out there on the lawn, I expect that they will become more motivated and inspired to do grassroots work. You know, that's a big passion of mine. Um, Timothy Knight's going to be speaking. It's a big passion of his, uh, the big Second Amendment grassroots activist. I mean, that's actually how he wanted himself titled, right? He's doing To the Republic uh, podcast. He's doing some other things now. Uh, but he wanted just to simply be, be introduced as a Second Amendment grassroots activist when he gets up to speak. Uh, of course, former NRA board member and longtime grassroots activist and organizer here in the U.S. on gun rights. And that's so important that we're going to hopefully inspire those five or 10,000 people to go home and become leaders. And like you said, they may find two or three speakers or two or three organizations they've never heard of before at this event and want to get involved with them at the local, regional, state, national level. Um, one of the things we're probably going to do is send out an email to everyone who has registered or anybody who gives us their email as part of that event there on the second and make sure they have the opportunity to know where that contact information is. So imagine an opt-in email. You get an email on, I don't know, November 15th that says, hey, we, as we said, we're destroying this email list, but if you'd like to stay in contact, here's the, the 30 speakers we had up on stage, you know, click the box for the ones you'd like to stay in contact with and we'll make sure that you get on their email list because obviously all of these organizations and entities that are gonna be up there most of them do have some great ways to communicate with people through social media, email, and and old old school grassroots gatherings right there at the local level. Right, and I you know I also love what you said about people going home and becoming leaders because you know what, um, not every organization is everywhere, and there are sometimes there are organiza there's there's sometimes there's nothing going on where you live, and. I always tell people, like, people get a hold of FPC, and they're like, hey, can you come do this, or hey, can you come do that? And one of the biggest things I tell them is, you know what? I wish we had the manpower and the resources to be everywhere. But here's the thing. You're there. You're passionate about this particular thing. You know, 
we can help you get you going and get your organization going there where you are. Because I believe that, you know, a lot of people look at it, the, the, you know, oh, comp they, they look at the competition amongst the groups. Mm -hmm. And to me, I'm just like, look, we all, look, we all have our own space where we can work and we do what we do. And none of us, not one organization, not one individual can be everywhere, can be all things to all people. So it's no, important okay. that if there's something you're passionate about, get involved where you are. And it's just that I get excited when I hear about people doing things where they're at locally. It's incredibly important. I mean, and look at the numbers, right? Again, 100, 110 million American gun owners, the largest organization doesn't, they're claiming just under 5 million now. Um, GOA, I think their numbers between two and 3 million they're claiming. I don't know what FPC is, a second amendment organization, to all the state level organizations, even the large ones like New York State Rifle Pistol, California Rifle Pistol. There, there are not 50 million or 60 million or 80 million members of any of these organizations. Yeah. You put them all together and you take out the overlap, we still might not even get over 10 million people that are actively part of these organizations. So it becomes incredibly important that the individual at the coffee shop, at their kid, in the stadium, at their kid's sports games, at the, the proverbial water cooler, or on their social media, which has become the modern water cooler, are talking about being gun owners. And it doesn't mean you have to pound the table and scream, shall not be infringed, and open carry in the public square, or any of that. It just means make sure people know you're part of the gun lobby. You are a right. proud American responsible gun owner. I'm all for a decentralized gun lobby from the bottom up grassroots because what we have right. even in this event we have people asking us well who's in charge well who's who's funding this well who we need to know who's organizing it we need to know what we're supposed to do really we want you to take ownership share the website go to social media go to instagram at 2a rally share the announcements there are we have a youtube channel with dozens of 30 to 45 second videos of, of you you did one um, i've got of course one up there we've got a, a bunch of different people who are speakers and supporters who've done these short video clips do a short video clip. It doesn't have to be fancy, right? I mean, right now, we're, I'm coming to you off of a, a laptop computer with some half-decent lighting and a blurry screen behind me. I mean, just throw a camera in front of your face, talk on Instagram, do a story, do it on Snapchat. I, I don't care where you do it. Spread the word, become a leader, become a grassroots advocate. It's, it's really, don't let it intimidate you because it really, all it means is talking about something you're passionate about. And you probably do that with sports, with racing, with hunting, with your gun collection anyway. Do it about the, the advocacy too. Exactly, exactly. Rob, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being willing to come on the program and talk about this event. And thank you for being a part of organizing this event. Uh, I am very much looking forward to seeing you out there on November 2nd. Yeah, man, less than two weeks to go. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you for your support and everything you and, and FPC are doing. All right, buddy. You take care. Yep. All right, everybody, that's Rob Pincus with the, with the Rally for Your Second Amendment Rights. All right, by the way, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. We very much appreciate you guys tuning in. We appreciate you liking and sharing the program, letting your friends know about the Firearms Policy Coalition and about the 2A rally coming up in Washington, D.C. on November 2nd. Let them know, let them know, let them know. Like and share, like and share. Make sure you guys do that. We are the Firearms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow subscribe, like, and share.